Yes, that's right. Today we continue our thriving journey through the Valley of Mega Moddedness. There will be panning. There will be adventures. There will be... Beef jerky trees. If you haven't seen the first 100 days, then you've got some catching up to do. And in the meantime, I will say that I have installed over 50 mods into the world, including Stardew Valley Expanded, Ridgeside Village, Artisan Valley, and so many more. These videos do take me ages to put together, so if you want to leave a like and subscribe to the channel, then I'd appreciate that very much. But without further ado, buckle yourself in, grab your nearest pan, and let's get into the video. Also, you should buy my merch. It's very cool and I like it a lot and I hope you do too. Link will be in the description. Here we are on day 101. Amusingly, I have exactly 100,001 gold in my pocket. Not an important detail, but I thought I'd share nonetheless. And welcome back to the Mega Modded Valley. I took a bit of time to reconnect with my surroundings. After all, it had been a while since I was last on the farm. It was Magnus's birthday today, so I thought I'd bring him one of his favorite gifts, a purple mushroom. And right afterwards, I found him in the forest assessing the magical boundaries. I thank you for your service, Rasmodius. Back on the farm, I then tended to my animals, shoved some iridium ore into my furnaces, and spent a while running around Pelican Town delivering some minor quest items to villagers. There's just so much to do, so I panicked and picked the most obscure task I could think of, but it did lead me to the secret woods, where this bear was a little too excited by the presence of some maple syrup. Dusty and I then rushed our way over to the final night of the night market, where I took a deep sea ride in the submarine to catch some deep sea fish. Although I got a little distracted from the raving shrimp floating past the window. After catching all the fish I needed, I headed back home, dumped my fish into my ever-growing collection in the kitchen, and headed to bed after a very successful first day back on the farm. Day 102, I was checking my mailbox and was surprised to see a letter from Magnus, who said he wanted to teach me some basic magic. Maybe he'll finally teach me how to love someone. Up at Ridgeside, the town square was popping off despite the cold weather. Maeve had swung a deal and got in a construction crew to come and snazzy up the town square. And I hate to say it, because this is Maeve we're talking about, but it actually looks quite good. Through the snowfall, I found Freddy tucked away inside and handed him an earth crystal for his birthday. I also ended up coming across our good friend Tort again, and he was just being cute and munching on berries. God, I love this tortoise. Anyway, shortly after, I decided to to escape the cold wintry weather and bus out to the desert, where I spent the rest of the day down in the Skull Caverns. This was because I was in dire need of iridium to turn into iridium sprinklers so I could expand my crop fields, and also for the minuscule chance a serpent would drop a red cabbage seed. I think you can guess that none did. Although I was happy to report that the amount of iridium did not disappoint, and I headed back home that night with 36 of it and a rabbit's foot, which is a welcome bonus. It's day 103 and with it comes another birthday. Seriously, there are so many. But before I could do that, I collected up some oak resin and maple syrup from the tree farm, gathered my iridium bars from the furnaces, and crafted a suitable birthday gift for Marlin. And of course said hello to all of my animal friends. Riding Dusty into town, we passed by the community center where I dropped off that rabbit's foot and completed the enchanters bundle, before finding Marlin and handing over the life elixir, who seemed to be wistfully looking into the distance. Being a Friday, the traveling cart was in town again, and it's going to be my last chance at getting a red cabbage before summer next year. However, my chances of getting one are disturbingly slim, and let's be real, the traveling cart has a long track record of being very unreliable for me. But that just means I'll get lucky, right? Back in town, I picked up a mysterious quest from Marlin to make a whole bunch of bombs. This scares me. But who am I to argue with authority? I went home and got to making those bombs right away. And after crafting as many as I could, I paid a quick visit to the dwarf to purchase the remaining bombs I needed, and then dropped them all off in Marlin's chest. Let's hope neither Marlin nor Gus smoke, because that could be disastrous. I then kicked back for the rest of the day down at the pier to fish the day away, and collect more fish to add to my collections tab. And you never know what fish you'll need for some mysterious cooking recipe down the line. 
Day 104, I had to start my day by adding another fish chest to the kitchen, since I had completely filled up the first one. And over in town, it was everyone's favourite grandma, Evelyn's birthday. So I gave her a lovely fairy rose for a lovely lady. Back on the farm, the trees I had planted ages ago in the greenhouse had finally grown, so I went about collecting some new fruits and flowers. With the three apples I had also collected, I rushed over to the community centre with Dusty, which I used to complete the fodder bundle. With one bundle left, all I needed to do to complete the community centre was a frickin' red cabbage! Some say patience is a virtue. I say patience can go and fuck that afternoon, I paid a visit to Rasmodius, who taught me the magical art of changing one's appearance. In all honesty, it's not as useful as you may think, but hey, I, I appreciate the gesture. In the same fashion as yesterday, I decided to spend my time fishing the rest of the day away, this time parked up by the riverside. And I was pretty happy with the range of fish I managed to catch, but before bed I got to spend some time with Dusty and Luna, my two favourite pals. Aww. Moving on to day 105, I found myself starting the day wandering around Ridgeside, and that was so I could hand Pika an emerald for his birthday. Afterwards, I spent the day in town beside my market stall, as Sundays are the valley's market days. Tort came past my stall and I was heartbroken to say that he didn't like the look of my items. Also, Pam came past asking Susan if she found anything good, to which she replied, get your own egg. <laughs> However, I had a very successful day at the market today, and I went to bed a happy man. I walked outside on day 106 to a field blooming with winter forageables, and after a quick check of the market day progress report, 44% towards the best market in the valley by the way, I got to picking all of the winter forageables. I turned what I could back into even more winter seeds, but I wasn't to plant them just yet. Instead I had to tear down my crop fields. Controversial? Maybe. But after that skull cavern run the other day, I had more than enough iridium to make a brand spanking new crop field. With some fancy schmear and see iridium sprinklers. So that's how I spent my afternoon. I laid out where the sprinklers will go, a middle area for the scarecrows and a future Junimo hut, the sprinklers themselves, and some wooden paths between the sprinklers. Then that evening I worked on getting all of the winter seeds planted, which by the end of the night I managed to do. Continuing on to day 107, I outlined the new crop field with rustic plank floors and added some decorating flourishes of fences and torches. And yes, I know, it's a complete whitewash of colours, but when spring rolls around, I promise you it'll look cool. You just gotta trust me. But I was very happy with how it turned out, and there's heaps of room beside me for a future expansion if I feel like adding some more crop fields. However, my hunger for money was growing stronger by the day, and with all the leftover winter seeds, I had grounds to make a whole bunch of tea saplings. But I just had one problem. I was out of fibre. So off to the mines I went, where I grinded away on level 80, collecting as much fibre as my abnormally large pockets would allow. I did call off the grind early that night to find Leah at the saloon to give her some goat's cheese for her birthday. And just before bed I made the big boy decision to wait to sell my tea saplings. It was the lack of fibre however that made it quite hard to craft any more. Day 108 started with a lovely wait outside the museum. As you all know, I am a very patient person. Some say patience is a virtue. I say patience can go and fuck. Like I said, very patient. I was here to drop off a rusty spur. That one's just for you, Gunther. Then to fix my fibre crisis, I headed back to the mines, pulled my pants up and got to work, spending the whole day here resetting level 80, to gather as much fibre as I could muster. And just before bed, I was able to make and ship off 126 tea saplings, along with a buttload of unwanted sap. And with my money-making pallet wet in once again, I headed to bed, where I, of course, dreamt about how awesome I am. Oh, and Santa showed up in my dreams? I'm not too sure how he got there. The Feast of the Winter Star was upon us on day 109, but before I could go enjoy the festivities, I had a very important job to attend to. My first batch of greenhouse ancient fruit had blossomed, and I had to spend a while turning them all into seeds and replanting them. It didn't take too long to finish up, but I was cutting it close, so I raced Dusty into town. I found my secret person this year, Philip, amongst the other Ridgeside Village attendees, and handed him a tulip. My gift giver this year was Alyssa, and she gave me... 
three peach saplings. I'm putting that high up there on the list of gifts I've been given. It uh, sure beats that lump of dirt that Vincent gave me one year. But with that the festival was over and my bed was calling me for some sleepy times. I began day 110 with a short trip down to Marnie's. I love my animals, but I was sick of picking up all of their produce, so I decided to treat myself to two auto grabbers to do it for me. Over in town, I passed by the special quest board and accepted Linus's community cleanup quest before having to give out two birthday presents. That's right, count him too. So I handed Clint his present and headed off to Ridgeside to go and find Shanice. I was sidetracked by Pika who asked me to try a new item he's been looking to put on his menu. And then I found Shanice in Heap's convenience store, so I gave her a slice of goat's cheese. Sticking around Ridgeside, I did some foraging around the hike trail where I got my hands on some Aurora and iris flowers and a bunch of forageables up at the ridge. I even did a quick bit of fishing in the lake and caught myself a mountain whitefish. However there isn't too much more to be said for the rest of the night. So we're on to day 111. I walked out of my house this morning and gazed upon my crop fields like a proud father. Look at them go. I'm so proud of you. Another day brings yet another birthday, Sophie is to be exact. So Dusty and I paid a quick visit to Blue Moon Vineyard where I dropped off a fairy rose flower for the occasion. I then circled around to Piers to purchase a few more trees that he was selling so I could fill my greenhouse with more funky and fresh produce. Now I just have to find room for the other 20 20 or so trees left for me to plant. Seriously, where the hell am I going to plant them all? Oh well, that's a problem for future Poxiel. For now, spring was right around the corner and prices for wood and stone were about to skyrocket. So, how about that inflation, am I right? So off to Robins I went to purchase a few stacks of wood while the price was still dirt cheap. That afternoon back on the farm I used a bit of time to make a few mayo machines and cheese presses to add to the machine area. So I could turn my animal produce into market day staples. That evening I ventured into the secret woods to chop down stumps for hardwood before turning in for the night. It was the final day of winter on day 112 and I was ready to say goodbye to the frostbite on the tips of my poor feetsies. I'll be honest with you all, I spent way too long trying to set up these seasonal crop chests. I tried on the side here, didn't like it. I hit a crop by accident, almost restarted the day. Tried on the top, didn't like it. I tried beside Dusty Stable, actually, I don't mind that. So after fussing over the chests for longer than I'd like to admit, I just mooched around the farm for the afternoon. As evening came I made my way up to Ridgeside Village to partake in the Ember of Resolutions festival. I found everyone at the ridge surrounded by a monstrous sized bonfire. I can't wait to accidentally singe my eyebrows off. The festival kicked off and I placed down my log to burn away what we wish to leave behind and ignite the spark that fuels our very best tomorrows and the days beyond. Lenny's words not mine unfortunately. So as the bonfire sparked to life I wished to leave behind all the times I had missed out on a lucky ring and hoped the spark would ignite my passion for panning for a small insignificant yet somehow very meaningful lucky ring. And I guess good health too but the lucky ring for sure. Day 113 brought not only a new season, but a new villager. Kent paid a visit to the farm this morning, introducing himself briefly before leaving again. Well it's a new year, my toes have defrosted and I now have feeling back in them. And I was ready for a brand new year. My first order of business was to clear out the farm of any debris that had spawned overnight, before scything away my now dead winter seeds from the crop fields. Riding Dusty into town, Mayor Lewis showed me an old patch of farmable land that may come in handy later. And I popped into Pierre's to purchase myself a bunch of spring seeds. Over the this year I'm going to be growing as many different types of crops as I can, mainly for the shipping collection which is egregiously long and because it may come in handy when giving out birthday gifts later on. So for the later half of the morning I finished off planting down all of my seeds. I'm a big fan of aesthetics as you can see. Today was also my favourite tortoise's birthday. I thought that he'd appreciate some cheese and uh, he didn't like my cheese. Why didn't he like my cheese? Everyone loves my cheese. Well, before I start crying, I quickly retreated back to the valley where I picked up the prismatic jelly quest from the special quest board, which if you've seen the first 100 days, you know went really well. Oh my god, where's it gone? No, are you f But I think I'll save that for another day. Instead, I spent the rest of the day mooching around the farm tidying it up. 
Well, today's another day, so let's go hunting for that prismatic slime. I spent all day down in the mines making my way down level after level hoping for the chance to see that colour changing slime. And holy smokes, we did it! We found a prismatic sl shard. It was a shard. Just a prismatic shard everyone, false alarm, false alarm. Well, we may not have found the slime, but hey, I'm not mad about the prismatic shard drop. Hustling on to day 115, the rain wasn't going to dampen my slime slaying mood. And after a quick trip to the museum to drop off an artifact, I was right back to the mines. Once again, I pushed myself down each level hoping for that slime to spawn. But alas, it was to be another unsuccessful day. I did get to level 10 combat though, so uh, I guess that's something. Yay! I took a day off from prismatic slime hunting on day 116. I also got distracted riding Dusty through a puddle on the farm. Nothing to see here. I was on my way to town as it was our new villager Kent's birthday today, so I handed him a cactus fruit. Another round of ancient fruit had blossomed back in my greenhouse, so I spent the better part of the day turning them into seeds and filling out the rest of the greenhouse with ancient fruit. As for the rest of the day, well you could say not a lot happened. Just a lot of planning going on in my head and making the seasonal crop chests look a bit more lavish. The following day, on day 117, I started my day off picking some parsnips, onions and buckwheat, and they made a wonderful first addition to my chests. Also, I'm just trying to prove to myself that they were worth making. I then found myself back in the village of Ridgeside on the hunt for Alyssa. That sounds worse than it is, it's, it's her birthday, I, I just wanted to give her a nice gift. Afterwards, I passed by Piers again to purchase some seeds to plant, and ended up getting some watermelon, muskmelon, and onion seeds, which I naturally planted back on the farm. Heading south to the cinder sap forest, I found Willy who slapped a big old king salmon on the ground and said, I bet you can't catch a bigger one. He didn't really say that, but I do like a bit of competition. However, I did still have a lot of time left in the day and decided a good use of my time would be spent back in the mines, grinding away at this prismatic slime quest. Yet despite my best efforts, it just wasn't happening. Even completing the slime monster slayer goal couldn't lift my spirits. So defeated, I headed back home for the night. I was feeling good on day 118. Maybe it was the crab cake, maybe it was the extremely good daily luck. Either way, it was going to be a good day. So I hit the mines with lifted spirits, and boy golly was I right. Not even a few minutes into the day, the prismatic slime came into view. I even had a wee little celebratory dance before dealing with the pest. I won't lie, my luck has been pretty shocking with this quest, but I'm happy to have it done. I learnt my lesson from the expanded series that the jar of slime disappears after the quest ends. So back on the farm I cemented this moment in history by placing the jar on a sign beside grandpa's shed. See I told you it'd be a good day. Dusty and I rode down to Rasmodius's tower to hand over the jar of slime. You know, before I forget and have to do it all over again. I then took Dusty on a detour to the west side of the forest to do a bit of foraging for the afternoon. Surprisingly that evening, I was back at it in the mines. This time I was farming for copper ore on level 20 since I was running low and needed a lot to feed my keg obsession, which will be starting very soon. Some potatoes, tulips and kale were awaiting my harvest the morning of day 119 and I was happy to add a few more crops to the row of chests. I had to replace said seeds so back to pea as I went to purchase a few more and I was able to plant down some green beans, passion fruit, parsley, spinach and sweet canary melons. I rode Dusty back into town afterwards as it was our very own mayor's birthday today so I gave him some goat's cheese. Being a Sunday the market was back in town and even though I was a little late to my all, I was still able to sell off a few artisan goods to the villagers and make a bit of profit. Back on the farm that evening I was able to get a head start on that keg obsession I mentioned yesterday and I put my first 50 kegs on the bottom floor of grandpa's shed. And hey don't you worry, we're just getting started. Day 120 began with replacing some blue jazz seeds I'd picked with a batch of sugar beet seeds. That was before I decided to delve into the skull cabins for the day, in hopes of getting more iridium and another chance at a red cabbage seed. It may not be obvious, but I was quite desperate for a red cabbage. However, the red cabbage luck was not in my favour today, but it seemed like everything else was. I ended up stumbling onto a prehistoric level where I got not one, but two dino eggs. And I walked away with 87 iridium ore, amongst a lot of other goodies. All I can say is the devil works hard, but when it comes to the skull cabins, I work work harder. 
Now that I had some dino eggs, I began day 121 by incubating one of them in my coop, and handing the other one over to Gunther for some extensive research. Since I was close by, I popped into Clint's to find he was knee deep in a commission for Mayor Lewis, which required a lot of gold. So being a gentleman, I said I'd help him out. I was actually here to drop off some iridium ore and coal he'd requested for the bomb, to blow through that rock in the way of the summit. Like me, you may be wondering what did Lewis need all of that gold for? Well, I I've heard rumors of a gold statue. But hey, I'm just here to get the job done. So Dusty and I made our way back to Clint's and dropped off the 30 bars of gold. On the way back home, I passed by the special quest board and picked up Linus's community cleanup again. I'll do it this time, I swear. Up at Ridgeside, I found Alyssa singing away in her garden. She got a bit embarrassed when she saw me listening and ran away. And then I got caught up in a feud between Faye and Brile. Brile visits the village every now and again, and I'm not too sure how they got off on the completely wrong foot. I was here to find Anton to hand him a birthday gift, but for the life of me, I actually just couldn't find him anywhere. So instead, I did some foraging around the hike trail and headed back to the valley for bedtime. Clint paid the farm a visit the morning of day 122. As a reward for the assortment of gold bars, he was going to clear a path beside Grandpa's shed to something nice. Sounds very intriguing. Today was Vincent's birthday, and even though he gave me dirt one year as a Feast of the Winter Star gift, I'm going to be the bigger man and I'm still going to give him a nice gift. Afterwards, I popped by Marnie's to expand my army of animals with Carmen the sheep, Monty the goat, and Nelly the cow. And I went back to make sure they were all settling in well. All before taking the elevator down into the mines to do a bit of trash fishing. Trying to catch a lava eel usually yields a lot of trash for me, so I thought it'd be a great place to catch some trash for Linus's quest. Exactly like I did for Lenny's trash collecting quest last year. So once I had all the trash, I headed up to the railway. And oh, come on, who put this train here? Of course, the one time I need to get over the train tracks, the train's going past. Once it had passed, I dumped the trash into the bin just as requested and and I ticked off another special quest. A lot of fluffing around the farm is what consumed my time for the rest of the night, so I guess we should just move on to day 123. Another round of ancient fruit was ready for picking this morning, and now that I had filled the greenhouse to the brim with ancient fruit, I could take advantage of my kegs and make some ancient fruit wine, which was very exciting. Afterwards, I headed up to Ridgeside again, this time to hand Isabel a diamond for her birthday before going to visit the summit. It seems Clint was able to use my resources to blow right through that pesky boulder, and I said this in the expanded series, and I'll say it again now. It feels very weird to be up here without fully completing the game. But hey, we got some seasonal flowers and the view was quite nice too. That afternoon, back on the farm, I got to picking some spinach and parsley that had finished growing and decided to replace them with some more parsnips and cauliflower. I chopped down some stumps for hardwood in the secret forest and decided to get an early night's sleep. Day 124, I awoke to some freshly grown cabbages and added them to the spring crop's chest. Then it was back to Ridgeside, where I gave Ezekiel a piece of iridium ore for his birthday. Although my good deed was rudely put to shame when outside the shop, Ezekiel seemed reluctant to let me help him find his ring. And once I did find it, he said I was the one who probably hid it and then stormed out of there. I was speechless. Nonetheless, I headed back down into the valley where I went back to grinding away in the mines for copper ore. Like I said, my keg addiction is only just getting started. But that didn't last too long because I remembered I had to replace the cabbages I'd picked with some more kale. And as the evening drew near, not a lot of productivity came with it, so I thought it'd be best to get some rest. Welcome to day 125, the day that will forever be known as the Day of Vengeance. If you remember correctly, I shamefully lost the egg hunt last year to Jazz and Vincent, but not this year. Walking into town, I had to quickly get some strawberries from Pierre's stall and get a quick photo with the cute bunny cutout. And then I was back to business. Straight off the mark, I raced to the first egg, and then the next, and the next, and then the next. My determination to win this egg hunt was exceptionally high, but that determination paid off, and you bet your sweet tushies I was crowned the winner, and I went to bed that night on an absolute high.
After asserting my dominance back in the valley as top egg hunter, day 126 felt like it was going to be a good day. Despite my reluctance, because I frankly don't like her, I was once again the bigger person and gave Maeve a birthday present, and spent the day in the centre of town selling goods at my market stall, only taking a break before midday to hand Haley a birthday gift as well. Business went well today and I ran short of supplies to sell by the mid-afternoon, so I retreated back to the farm to tend to my animals, forage around the farm, and gather some hard wood from the nearby secret woods. It turns out all of that hard work at the market days had paid off on day 127 as we were now recognised as the best market in Stardew Valley. And now we were aiming for the best market in the Ferngill Republic. After attending to some morning chores, Dusty and I passed by the special quest board and I accepted Demetrius's aquatic overpopulation quest. However that would have to wait because I had more important matters to deal with. Picking salmon berries. Yeah, I, I just wanted to pick salmon berries for a while, which is what I did. Although I did find Linus rocking his birthday suit up at the mountain lake, let's just hope the fish don't find anything to nibble on. And further up to the north at the Adventurer's Guild, I was glad to see Marlin didn't accidentally blow the guild up, and the bombs I'd made for him were actually for the castle village. Marlin then rewarded me with a ledger I could use to buy some decorations. Back on the farm, I picked some parsnips, bought some potato seeds from Piers, and planted them down before laying out some mahogany tree seeds. Trust me, I know you need a lot of hardwood once the community centre is finished and I'm hoping to say that that'll be done soon. And it beats the monotony of chopping stumps down every day. I spent the first half of the morning on day 128 pottering around the farm, placing eggs and milk into my machines, making 30 more kegs and adding them to my ever growing collection. I then found Trini heading into town and gave her a red cherry for her birthday before continuing on to Piers to purchase some more onion seeds. And back on the farm I picked my sugar beets and planted down some onion seeds to replace them. Up at Ridgeside I found Trini again who accused me of visiting Ridgeside to see her big sister Alyssa. And that is quite scary because I actually was. How did you know that? But she did introduce me to all of her plants which was quite cute. Aww. Afterwards I made Trini's words true by finding Alyssa and handing her an emerald. Truthfully because I didn't want to be lonely for the flower dance coming up. And if the wizard can't teach me how to love, then I guess I'll have to do it all by myself. Speaking of, down in the valley I was trying to make my way into town when I stumbled into Alyssa. And I was able to tell her how wonderful her singing was. I was however making my way to the river so I could try my hand at catching some sunfish for Demetrius' special quest. I managed to catch five of them before I ran out of time and they disappeared disappeared for the night which took me to the end of the day. So on to day 129. After receiving some wise words from Isabel at the Log Cabin Hotel and learning how to say no every now and again and giving Philip a gift for his birthday, I was straight back to the river to finish up catching the last of the sunfish. I caught the last sunfish just after midday and I wasn't finished fishing there, oh no no no. I spent the afternoon casting out over the pier into the sea to catch some ocean fish and that evening I parked up at the mountain lake to catch some lake fish for the rest of the night. But just before bed I was able to collect up my very first batch of ancient fruit wine and ship it off. Day 130 I was happy to receive the crafting recipe for a farm computer in the mail from Demetrius. I'm glad to see all of those sunfish was worth the effort. I then picked more ancient fruit out of my greenhouse and not surprisingly dumped them into my kegs at grandpa's shed. My crop fields had yielded another harvest of kale, parsley and sweet canary melons so I got to picking them all. Dusty and I paid a quick visit to Piers to purchase some replacement seeds and planted down some more musk melons and spinach in their place. As you can see on my handy dandy to-do list, I'm trying to get two of each animal. And with that ancient fruit wine moolah in my pocket, I felt I could continue making that dream come true. So at Marnie's I purchased a couple more animal friends, Justin the duck and Paula the rabbit. Look, if there's one thing I'm good at, it's naming animals. Back at home I realised that Clint should have cleared that path he talked about by now. And I was right. What I found on the other side was a beautiful spring surrounded by mahogany trees and seasonal forageables. As for the rest of the evening, I gifted Magnus a purple mushroom in hopes of getting more hearts with him, made some more lightning rods to maximise lightning to battery potential, and changed this path to fit the aesthetic. I began day 131 with a few morning chores around the farm before paying a quick visit to Marnie's and purchased myself two new piggies who I named Porky and Fergie. I then retreated to the mines for the rest of the day where I spent it farming for more copper. Look, I'm gonna need a lot of kegs. 
So I guess we're moving right on to day 132. This morning was spent once again dealing with some farm admin work, like picking some ready to harvest green beans, saying good morning to all of my animal friends, and adding 40 more kegs to grandpa's shed. Now that I had piggies roaming the farm, I thought I'd add a few truffle oil machines to the animal area, and I seemed quite happy about that. As the day rolled into the afternoon, I rode Dusty to the wizard's tower to hand Magnus yet another purple mushroom, and while I was circling into town, I found Philip trying to plead George into doing his weekly physical therapy. Therapy. George is great once you get to know him, but man, is he a miserable old fart. Anyway, I was here to drop off a chewing stick to the museum that I had found yesterday in the mines, and for the rest of the afternoon I went around the valley digging up artifacts from those secret notes I have found, and collected a few coconuts and cactus fruits from the desert. Just before bed that evening I got everything ready for the market day tomorrow. Speaking of tomorrow, it's tomorrow, and it's time to whip out my stellar bartering skills. Although when I got there I found two NPCs clipping into each other which I'm sure makes for good business. Speaking of good business, since we now had title of the best market in the valley, our stall had been upgraded and we could now sell 6 items at a time. And along with that came more villagers to buy stuff, and more competition. It was going so well that I had to run back home to find more things to sell. However 6 o'clock came around which signalled the end of another market day and I headed home after another successful day of selling. Day 134 started with a cable car ride up to Ridgeside so that I could find Andy. Yes, there is half a door floating there. No, I don't know how to fix it. Andy managed to just phase right through it and I was happy to hand over a green bean for his birthday. Just don't let the floating door hit you on the way out. Oh come on, that was a good one. After doing a bit of foraging around the hike trail, I managed to find the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles distant cousin chilling in the river by Geo's place. I did try to catch one, but it kind of vanished from view, so I thought I'd come back another time and try again. Back down in the valley I spent a while continuing to forage. Seasonal forage was all around, so I thought what better time than now to collect it all up. Heading into town a little while later, I picked up Willy's Juicy Bugs quest from the special quest board, and dropped off a strange doll for Gunther at the museum. As for the rest of the night, there was nothing but goofing around to be had on Mega Modded Farm. So let's jump right into day 135. I found myself starting the day on the east side of town, fishing off the side of Shearwater Bridge. I was here to catch a butterfish, which I managed to do after a bit of struggle, because it was Andy's birthday and I heard that he's a big fan of butterfish. And then I was back to the mines for the rest of the day. With my burglar's ring teamed up with a splash of monster musk, I was on the hunt to slay as many bugs as I could. For Willy's quest, not for fun. Although the sound is kind of satisfying. Gratifying sounds aside, I spent the rest of the day here, completed the Dougie Monster Slayer goal, and managed to squeeze in 100 bug meat by the early hours of the morning, and made it to bed with a few seconds to spare. Day 136, I was happy to say I looked pretty chirpy for only 4 hours sleep. After sorting my full inventory from the night before into all of my chests, I made my way down to the pier to dump all 100 bug meat into Willy's barrel. I just pray he won't forget about it and let it go rotten. Being the 24th of spring today, it was of course the flower dance. When I got there I found Mr. Agua looking at some aqua, maybe wondering if he had been destined to be a water treatment scientist from birth. I then popped by Pierre's stall to get the tub of flowers crafting recipe and another rare crow, before plucking up the courage to ask Alyssa to dance with me. And thank god she said yes. We danced alongside everyone else in complete silence. After the dance I remembered to collect up another batch of ancient fruit wine and ship it off just before bed. Which means that on day 137 we had some ancient fruit to pick. And more than normal may I add, one more week until every plant will be ready for harvest. I then made use of more kegs in the shed and shoved all of the ancient fruit in for another round of fermentation. I'll admit today was spent flexing my massive and very humble decorating muscles. I went around adding grass to empty spaces around the farm, added some hardwood fences and torches to the tree farm and my hub area, and I even added a nice little path off to the spring that lay beside grandpa's shed. 
I welcomed a new friend onto the farm on day 138. Everyone say hello to Lizzie the dinosaur. I've got my fingers crossed that Lizzie doesn't have an appetite for small birds and mammals, because that would not be good. Dusty and I rode through the rain and into town this morning, only to get slightly distracted by a puddle on the ground because it was Pierre's birthday, and I handed him a rabbit's foot since he's a very difficult person to find a gift for. Afterwards I headed up to Ridgeside where I found Pippo and her little acorn friend playing around in the rain. After a bit of back and forth, Pippo and Acorn asked for my help. Apparently Acorn had sent something around the hike trail, or maybe someone, and they were looking for her. Someone with dark brown hair, pointy ears, and a bit shorter than Pippo. I told them that I hadn't seen anyone around here, but Acorn remembered that he sensed her at night, an hour before midnight to be exact. But they had to leave and I was left to try and find this mysterious person by myself. So I added it to my handy dandy to-do list, because for now I was back to foraging around the valley. I foraged up at the ridge, back down at the spring on the farm, and up at the summit for a quick escape from the dreary weather below. All before handing Rasmodius another purple mushroom to his growing pile of mushrooms and wading around the hike trail again that night. Although no mysterious figure seemed to appear tonight no matter where I searched, so I gave up and headed back home for the night. I counted my animals on day 139, and I'm very relieved to say that everyone is still alive and well. Yay! Thinking about it, I haven't had Robin on the farm build anything in a while, so I commissioned a slime hutch for her to build for me, in a temporary spot across the bridge. I have a bad habit of waiting outside villagers' bedrooms to give them gifts, and today was no different. But eventually Emily came out and I could give her some wool for her birthday. I wasn't finished giving out gifts quite yet though. Magnus received his 40th purple mushroom and I went looking for Alyssa to hand her another emerald. But as for where she was, it took me an embarrassingly long time for me to find her. Turns out she was just chilling out at Marnie's. To finish my day, I got everything prepared for another market day tomorrow. Here we are on day 140, the final day of spring. We had a busy day ahead of us and it started with a couple of Ridgeside birthdays to acknowledge. I managed to find Sunny walking through the village square where I handed him a piece of goat's cheese, and I handed Bert a gold bar just as he was leaving his bedroom. Back on the farm I had let everything grow so I could pick it all at once on the final day. It took a couple of trips but I managed to pick everything before riding Dusty into town and hunkering down at the market stall. Business today was booming. That's right I've even picked up some corporate lingo. But despite that I was hoping to buy some cheap parsnip seeds to plant for the change into summer, as it saves me having to hoe and water a bunch of dirt. But Pierre decided to take the day off. Could I have gone to Joja? Of course I could have. Did I forget? Absolutely I did. By 6 o'clock I had sold all but one single salmon berry, which was the sign of another successful market day. And back on the farm that night I watched the light of spring fade away below the horizon, ready for the adventures that this year's summer season would bring. Get your speedos out! Ugh. Marlon, really? You needed to come on the first of summer. Man, I need to do my intro. Sorry, give me one second. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Get your speedos out everyone because it's summertime. I started day 141 by checking the market progress report and we were racing towards the title of best market in the Ferngill Republic. Most of my morning was spent fixing up the crop field since a certain someone didn't want to run his shop yesterday. But I got it all done in no time at all. Dusty and I headed into town to grab a whole bunch of seeds from Piers including some red cabbage seeds all the normal crops, and some adzuki bean seeds. So back to the farm I went where I got to planting a haul of seeds. I also planted down my red cabbage seeds with some deluxe speed grow because I was so ready to have the community center finished. I still had quite a bit of time left in the day so I did a bit of tidying up around the farm and had a quick gander at my brand new slime hutch. Afterwards I paid Magnus another visit to hand him his 50th purple mushroom. You may be wondering why I'm giving him so many gifts, and I promise you'll find out very soon. But that for now is my little secret. Unless you've seen the expanded series, in which case it's, it's really not that secret. Anyway, I picked up Gunther's fragments of the past quest from the special quest board and decided to chop down my mahogany trees since they'd all finished growing. And with that I headed to bed after a very successful first day of summer. 
Day 142 came along with another birthday, so up to Ridgeside I went where I found Lola outside tending to her plants, and I handed her a jar of fresh mayonnaise. Afterwards I slapped on some more of that pungent monster musk and went down into the mines collecting bone fragments for Gunther's quest. Yet again armed with the musk and my trusty burglar's ring, I was able to collect lots of bone fragments from the skeletons that plagued levels 70 to 80, and as an added bonus I managed to complete the skeleton monster slayer goal. I I finished the quest as evening turned into night and just before bed I went around collecting all of the fruits and nuts from the trees in my greenhouse. Zeus had come to play on day 143 and I was stoked because I was running desperately low on batteries. I began my day riding Dusty through the rain over to the museum where I dropped off a hundred bone fragments to Gunther before burdening Rasmodius with another purple mushroom. But hey as you can see it was working. Take it from me if you ever want to win someone over just keep giving them the same gift over and over again until they can't help but like you. I swear it's foolproof. I continued to work through the rain as I ran Dusty around the valley collecting up the seasonal forage. I'm doing this a lot so I can try and knock off as many things off the shipping collection as I can. Look, the less I have to do later the better. Even the Ridgeside forage seems to have quite a surplus of different seasonal forageables. And like I said, I don't want to stress out future Poxiel. Time flies when you're having fun though because it was already getting late. I crafted and used a rain totem so that I could guarantee another thunderstorm tomorrow. I collected up my ancient fruit wine from the shed and shipped it off, and then babysat my lightning rods for the rest of the night. That's not a joke by the way. I need batteries damn it. The morning of day 144 had me collecting batteries, picking ancient fruit, dumping ancient fruit into kegs, using my third and final rain totem just to make sure I overdid it with the batteries, and giving Jazz a little birthday gift. I've really got to stop waiting outside villagers' bedrooms. I then spent the rest of day 144 expanding the crop area. I'd been wanting to do this for a while now, but the lack of batteries made it quite difficult to craft more sprinklers. But since I had been blessed with lightning, that was no longer a problem. So I pretty much just copy and pasted the design over, added in the sprinklers and the hardwood fences, then spent way too long hoeing the dirt. And here we are on day 145. I began the day with a few chores around the farm, collecting batteries and a whole bunch of pine tar and oak resin from the tree farm, saying sorry about all the rain to my animal friends who had been stuck inside, and touched up my new crop field. With my big crop field expansion came the opportunity to grow more crops. So to P as we headed, I was able to get some cassava seeds, chive seeds, cotton seeds, cucumber seeds, gooseberry seeds, kiwi seeds, lettuce seeds, navy bean seeds, oregano seeds, perilla seeds, raspberry seeds, and wasabi seeds. So for the rest of the morning I got to planting down my haul of new seeds. Down at the beach I came across Willy using that bug meat I'd gotten for him a little while ago, and if that were really me, you wouldn't catch me within 10 feet of whatever the hell that thing is. <coughs> I was here in fact to spend the rest of the day fishing into the ocean, which is exactly what I did. I left my house the morning of day 146 to the beautiful summer sun, and I took a moment to look over my crop fields like a proud father once again. Ah, oh, they grow up so fast. It was Martin's birthday today, and I know he loves a good ice cream, so I backed Dusty into the ice cream stand and it worked like a charm. It took a while for him to arrive in town, but I found him walking past Harvey, so I handed over his birthday present. And you know what? I've been thinking. With all of these birthdays to keep on top of, why don't we get a birthday? Why don't all of the villagers give me a bunch of presents? I guess I do get some presents in the mail, but like an actual birthday, you know? Maybe it's just my crippling loneliness talking. Anyway, I was back to foraging today. I hit all the usual spots in the valley, including the summit, and of course went around Ridgeside collecting everything I could too, which honestly took up the rest of my day. Day 147 was a monumental day, because when I walked outside this morning, I found my magnificent red cabbages ready to be picked, and I think you all know what that means. I handed in my red cabbage to finally complete the dye bundle. The Junimo said their goodbyes to me and that was it. The community center was complete. Being a Sunday today too was another market day, and I spent the day all the way to closing time selling my farm's goods. And although it may not seem like a lot happened today, a lot happened today. 
Continuing the success of yesterday onto today, day 148, I saw the market progress report and we were working towards the best market on the continent, which means that we had earned the title of best market in the Fern Girl Republic. Look at us go. Shortly after, Lorenzo paid a visit to the farm where he praised my late grandpa's kindness when they fell on hard times. So he gave me a whole bunch of free stuff in return for his kind actions. And I won't lie, I kind of feel bad for complaining about not having a birthday now. Heading into town, I found the town celebrating the return of their beloved community center. I received the town hero trophy from Lewis, and in typical fashion, I egged Pierre on to settle this the fun way. And, uh... Remind me to never piss Pierre off. Speaking of, I headed to his shop to get some radish seeds, but I ended up finding Yuma getting his weekly shopping, and I let him cut the line because he was in a hurry. Pierre told me he doesn't see him playing with the other kids and that he's here every week buying groceries. Looks like I'll have to keep an eye on him. That afternoon I ended up finding a lost looking Jazz in the West Forest, so I had to guide her home and gave her back to Marnie to take care of. And I gave Magnus his 100th purple mushroom, all before calling it in for an early night. My mailbox was crammed full of cooking recipes when I woke up on day 149. Turns out completing the community board makes a lot of people like you. And somewhere in there I got a letter from Willie to meet him at his shop. But before I could do that, I had to take care of a few chores around the farm and I picked up Olivia's elegant reception quest from the special quest board. After dealing with all of that, I had the time to visit Willie's shop. And when I entered the back room, I saw Willie had a broken down boat awaiting repair. That when repaired could take me to the Fern Islands. <laughs> Good thing for me, I'd been hoarding those exact items. So after a quick trip back home to gather everything that I needed, I donated 5 battery packs, 200 hardwood, and 5 iridium bars. Now all I had to do was just wait until tomorrow. Afterwards I decided to get a head start on Olivia's special quest, and utilize the patch of land Lewis talked about a while ago on the east side of town. You need 20 starfruit wine, so I went and bought the seeds from Sandy in the desert, and Dusty watched on as I planted the starfruit down. But it's me, and I obviously had to place some stone paths down so it looks good. As I went to bed that night, I got to see Willie and Robin working hard to repair the boat, which I am very excited to use. It's day 150, and what better way to celebrate this milestone with our first trip over to Ginger Island. Willie and I sailed across the sea over to the Fern Islands, and we're getting close to our favourite segment. But wait, 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 patience is a virtue, patience is a virtue. I won't lie, that's a little rich coming from me. I met the boy we know as Leo, but to get his attention, we had to gather some golden walnuts. So, cue the golden walnut collecting montage. Ah, now wasn't that just so satisfying? I had to return home early today so that I could remember to collect up another batch of ancient fruit wine, which I dumped into the shipping bin. A few crops were ready for harvest the morning of day 151, so I went around picking them all as well as harvesting a greenhouse full of ancient fruit, which I then shoved into kegs up at Grandpa's shed. Today was actually my second annual luau in the valley, and as I got to the beach, I popped my truffle into the potluck soup, watched Freddy and Lola dance together because they're just so adorable. Aww and shared in a delicious soup with everyone. And just before I knew it, the day was over. And overnight, a bolt of lightning struck the collapsed Jojo building. Day 152 was Faye's birthday. And after harvesting a few sections of grown crops and collecting a bunch of oak resin from my tree farm, I paid Ridgeside a visit and found Faye where I handed her a forest amanke flower. Amanke? Amanse. Amanke. Am amanse. I don't know. But it was only a quick visit today as back down in the valley I popped into Pierre's to purchase some more seeds which I then planted back down on the farm. Up by the adventurers guild I found Marlin looking very longingly over the river. He told me there's something he's been meaning to show me and soon after he led me into town. Over in town Marlin unlocked the sewer hatch and we headed inside. Down in the sewers I met Krobus, a shadow person hiding down here from all the stinky villages above ground because they're just too stinky. Well really it's because they'd be scared of him. How However, I received the sewer key from Marlin after our visit to the sewer, and I'm going to be sure to make good use of it so I can be the bestest of friends with our pal Krobus. 
Circling around past town, I passed the rundown Joja building where the lightning had struck last night and found the missing bundle. Something I'll add to my huge but handy dandy to-do list. Magnus then received his 2000th and final purple mushroom from me later that afternoon, which now put him at full heart. For the rest of the night, however, not much happened. Okay, well, I did add more sprinklers and paths to the patch of farmland where I was growing starfruit, but as you'll see, there was really no need. Instead, let's move on to day 153, and you'll be glad I did because I was back to Ginger Island today. What's this? I'm using some golden walnuts to unlock the dig site. <gasps> What's this? I'm clearing out the dig site of all the trees and rocks. What's this? I'm just standing by the dig site river. That's right, coming back for its third season, it's finally time for your favorite segment of all time, Panning with Poxio. The rules for this game are very simple. I try to pan for the elusive lucky ring, a ring that grants the player a plus one luck bonus. And the exciting thing about this season is the fact that my pan is now upgradable which will make for some fun episodes I'm sure. Today was an unsuccessful day and no lucky rings to be panned up unfortunately, but I was excited to get this pan upgraded for panning greatness. The next day, day 154, I was able to collect a pile of batteries thanks to yesterday's thunderstorm and I wanted to give Flora an autumn drop berry for her birthday, but I couldn't enter her room, nor do I think that she ever leaves her room on a rainy day. So sorry I guess, no autumn drop berry for you. So back to the valley I went where I found Magnus in a huff at the railroad. Turns out he'd lost his magic ink to his toxic ex and it was stuck behind this sealed passageway. He tasked me to talk to Krobus, find a talisman to open the seal and get the ink. So off to the sewer I went. Krobus used his magic to open up the passageway where he dropped the talisman and off I ventured into the mutant bug lair. It sounds scarier than it actually is. It didn't take me too long to find my way to the talisman and I was back out of there in no time at all. I was making my way through town to take said talisman to the railroad when I found floor. Thank god for market days where all the villagers have no choice but to come and spend their money. Nonetheless I used the talisman to open up the passageway and I headed inside. Now a lot of people commented about this last time in my expanded series but you can just fish up the void mayo for the henchmen. And by a lot of people I mean a lot of people. But I got him to move out the way and I picked up the Magnus's magic ink. In return for my hard efforts he rewarded me with the Book of Summoning, which is a book where I can order obelisks, golden clocks and Junimo huts to be built on my farm. For ridiculous amounts of gold. I then spent that evening dropping off an artifact to Gunther and working on a path down to the secret woods entrance, which ended up turning out quite nice. I was straight to the special quests board on day 155, where I picked up Emily's rock rejuvenation quest. Did I spell rejuvenation wrong? Yes I did, but I fixed it so let's quickly move on. To Ginger Island. My task today involved making it all the way through the volcano dungeon, which comprises of 9 randomly generated levels, all filled with tiger slimes, magma sprites and lots of other things trying to stop you from reaching the top. So I battled my way through each level, speed running as fast as I could to the top. And after a day's work, I passed by the last level and found myself atop the volcano caldera. In front of the forge, some guy just kind of phased into existence. His name was Lance, and he was very impressed that I had made it up here. He explained to me that this forge can enchant weapons and even combine the divine properties of magical rings, and then left after saying the first slash sends their regards. Okay. I did also get a prismatic shard for my efforts, so hey that's cool. It had been a big day of adventure, so once I was home again I headed to bed for an early night's sleep. Although apparently Luna didn't agree with that idea. Seriously Luna, just let me through. Rasmodius paid a visit to the farm on day 156 with news from the Fern Girl Ministry of Magic. They were letting Magnus teach me how to la- I mean, do warp magic. Also, Lance paid a visit to the farm and he dropped off his schedule so I'd know where to find him if I ever needed to find him. Up at Ridgeside I came across a conversation going on between Maeve and Shanice. And as always, Maeve was doing what she does best, being a downright bitch. 
It sounds like she's proposed building another Jojo Mart up in the village. Look Maeve, I've got rid of one before, I'll do it again. And then she told Lenny to be more of a leader rather than a crowd pleaser. That woman makes my blood boil. Speaking of, she took me aside and let her expectations about me be very clear. Don't worry Maeve, I'll be making more than you do in no time at all. I was here in Ridgeside to give Lenny a birthday gift, so that's exactly what I did. And afterwards I headed into Alyssa's home, where she offered to show me her song that she's been working on, but she wanted to use the piano at the Starbound stage. So once we got there, she sang her song for me. It was a beautiful song, but Lenny overheard and offered Alyssa the opportunity to sing for the village one day soon. And very sweetly, she said she'd do it only if I was there. Even though she was super nervous, she'd write a new song for the occasion. Back down in the valley, I got stuck into some chores, like harvesting some crops on the farm, handing over a bunch of gems for Emily's rock rejuvenation quest, purchasing the final backpack upgrade from Pierre's, and replanting some seeds in my crop fields. And later that afternoon, I put my pan in for a copper upgrade at Clint's. Down in the Cindersap forest, with the prospect of warp magic ringing in my ears from Magnus's visit this morning, I decided to visit him to learn the secrets of warp magic. I drank an elixir, went through a rigorous training montage, and I was nailing this whole making a warp points thing. So to put this newfound ability into action, I met Rasmodius in the backwoods, where we, with the power of friendship, made a nexus for me. This place was my hub of warp points for me to find around the valley, and I even made my first warp location in Magnus's tower. And I was very excited at the thought of having so many warp points around the valley. As evening drew, I made another warp point up at the Adventurer's Guild, bringing my nexus up to two warp points. But today had been a massive day, so I gladly went to bed that night. The action continued on to day 157. I started my day adding a farm warp point to my nexus, handing Sam a cactus fruit for his birthday, totally didn't wait outside his room like I always do, and decided to spend the day diving down the skull caverns armed with a pile of bombs at my disposal. I spent the whole day down here, collecting as much iridium and other goodies as I could. But in the early hours of the morning, I managed to collect another batch of ancient fruit wine. There wasn't much to day 158, I re-kegged all of my ancient fruit from my greenhouse, helped Bert fix a problem with his mill, gave Kenneth a birthday present, got my copper pan and immediately gave it back for a steel upgrade, went to commission a pond from Robin, but she wasn't there, upstairs in Grandpa's shed I put down a few iridium sprinklers in preparation for future use, decorated a path up to my farm warp point, and incubated a void egg I gotten a few days ago from Magnus's ex flying over. Anyway, it's day 159, and my day started out with a few chores around the farm before returning to Robin's, where I got to commission that pond I had been after yesterday, and handed Demetrius a strawberry for his birthday. Afterwards, I took a quick bus trip out to the desert so I could pay Sandy a visit and buy a heap of starfruit seeds. You'll soon find out why I'm growing this excess amount of starfruit, but for now I planted all of the seeds in Grandpa's shed. Turns out, preparing that space and planting so many seeds takes up a lot of time, and I ended up just mooching around the farm with Dusty for the rest of the night. Day 160 had me running around the farm completing chores once again. I found myself back at Clint's receiving the steel pan and giving it straight back for the gold one. Shortly afterwards I took a boat ride over to Ginger Island, where I planted a melon, garlic and wheat on the island farm for the Gourmand Frog, and I had a go at the musical chimes puzzle. Now I've played this game for about 680 hours and never until now have I completed this puzzle on the first attempt. I was quite honestly expecting to be here all day. The fact I'm not moving after completing it is just me in shock. With all of this extra time on my hands now, I decided to make use of it by donating a frog specimen to Professor Snail and exploring the volcano dungeon for a while. Although it was pretty short lived, and on the way back to the boat I detoured past the island farm to unlock the island farmhouse before returning to the valley for the night, where I made myself the iridium band before bed, which gives me a light source, magnetism and increased damage all in one. We were gunning for the best market across the continent on day 161. In town I went around and gauged my competition before setting up my store with my ancient fruit wine. As the markets opened and the crowds rushed in to buy overpriced items, my wine started selling left, right and centre. By 3 in the afternoon my wine supply had run dry, and unfortunately I had to retire from my stall early. So for the rest of the day I even surprised myself by doing this, I decided to ship away one of everything I had stored around the farm. This was so I could get a head start on the shipping collection later on. I did this a few times because let's be honest I'm quite the hoarder, but I'm hoping that works out in my favour later on. 
The first thing I did on day 162 was check the mail for our weekly market day report. We were already at 95% progress towards the best market in the continent, and if I keep upselling my ancient fruit wine, then I think we'll be ready to take over the world. But until then I had some things to do. Like giving the dwarf a piece of amethyst for his birthday, I then tried to get my pan back to upgrade one last time, but for some reason Clint hates making money and decided to not work today. And I was very sad. So sad in fact, I just stood there for a while contemplating whether I should fill a slingshot full of eggs and follow Clint around for the day. But I don't have time for those kind of shenanigans. Instead I fished off into the mountain lake where I caught myself a sturgeon, which I placed into my pond back on the farm. This is so I can make caviar for the missing bundle. And afterwards I decided to put all that hatred towards Clint into crusading through the deep woods. I wasn't too sure what I was doing, but nonetheless I travelled onwards, slaying monsters that came between me and furthering deeper into the woods. I even managed to not only complete the rock crab monster slayer goal, but the bat one too. The dead of night was upon me and I had made it to level 15. It seems I had just gotten lost and the monsters overran me. And unfortunately, I passed out to the hands, well, body, of a slime. <coughs> And to add insult to injury, I lost my iridium bars from this morning, and I passed out on the way home. Safe to say, today had not been a good day. But day 163 was a new day though, and after I'd picked my self esteem up off the floor, I got on with my day. I had to wait very patiently while my boots filled with water outside Olivia's house. I was here to give Victor a birthday gift. Afterwards I had to wait again. I swear to god if I have to wait outside one more time I might delete all of my Stardew Valley videos and just become a slime YouTuber because that'd be much better than waiting outside all day. You see I had picked up Gus's famous omelette quest the other day and I was here to give him the eggs he was after. So I did just that, but for some reason I still needed to collect them, but I have auto collectors so how, how does that work? I'm not too sure and I look forward to all of your comments about this matter. That afternoon I was exploring the cinder sap forest and came across this mysterious warp point. So with nothing much to do I stepped onto it and was teleported to a huge overgrown forest. Nearby I found a plaque which had the phrase follow the mushrooms inscribed onto it. So I started to follow the path of the mushrooms, making my way through heavy foliage and trying to make sense of this maze of trees and mushrooms. But it wasn't too long until I found my way to this village of Junimos, who seemed to sell the most peculiar things. Not only that, but very important things like gems and artifacts and all sorts. I'm sure this is going to come in very handy later on, but it was getting late and the only way back home is the way I came in. So back through the forest maze I ventured. I eventually made it out where I reunited with Dusty and headed home for the night. I started day 164 with the vision of Aurora Vineyard. No, I'm serious, what just happened? Well, who am I to argue with weird obscure visions? Dusty and I rode over to the abandoned vineyard in the west forest, and I headed inside. What I found was a scroll, which unfortunately I couldn't decipher. But Magnus caught me on the way back home, saying I had intense magic surrounding me. Magnus, you think I'm glowing? Stop it, you little tease. Okay, actually he thought I'd done something wrong, so uh, thanks. He offered to help decipher the scroll that magically appeared in my pocket. Sadly, the wizard couldn't do such a thing, and we were introduced to Camilla, another wielder of magic who Magnus had called out for help from. She helped us figure out what the scroll said. Turns out a young Junimo was after 200 starfruit. Now you know why I need so much starfruit because that is a damn load of starfruit. Afterwards I paid a visit back to the Junimo village where I was able to conjure up another warp point with the support from 11 Junimos all watching on. Good thing I didn't get stage fright. To activate it I had to make my way through the maze one last time, but I got there eventually and I was able to add another warp point to my nexus. That afternoon I dropped off a birthday gift to Willy and paid a visit to my little patch of farmland to collect my ancient fruit that I'd been growing. However, a grave error in my timing meant that I wouldn't have time to turn said starfruit into wine for Olivia's elegant reception quest. But hey, as we know, I need a buttload of starfruit anyway, so I can't complain. Back on the farm, my void chicken had finally hatched and I called him Arthur, and we had a cute little bonding moment between the two of us. Aww. It was Wednesday night, so I had some wine to collect up and save for the next market day. And with that, it was already bedtime. It was day 165 and I began the day with a trip to Ridgeside where I gave Mr. Agua, who works at the water treatment plant some aquamarine for his birthday. 
Seriously, you just can't write this stuff. Afterwards, Clint redeemed himself to me by being available to work on the final pan upgrade for me. And then I put the rest of today aside to start and finish Birdie's quest. You see, on Ginger Island, there's this woman called Birdie who lost her husband at sea and wants to find one of his keepsakes. So she gives you a war memento to get you started. So if you give the war memento to Kent, the gourmet tomato salt to Gus, the Stardew Valley Rose to Sandy, the advanced TV remote to George, the Arctic Shard to the Wizard, and finally the worm to Willy, then you'll get the pirate's locket, which is exactly what Birdie is after. And in return for running around the valley on a wild goose chase, you get the crafting recipe for fairy dust and a few golden walnuts. From beaches to mountains, I found myself that night looking over the valley with Dusty, unaware of the fact that I could probably fall at any moment. I was here to try and find the mysterious figure Acorn and Pippo were talking about, and while that certainly isn't creepy at all, I found the mysterious figure by the rundown house who said to come back tomorrow night to meet properly. And with the image of this in my head, I can kiss sleeping tonight goodbye. I'll keep day 166 short, because all I did today was turn my bottom paddock into a cute little orchard, because I had to get 20, yes that's right, 20 different tree saplings from Piers. But I did manage to plant them all, and I even had room, god forbid, for more trees if there were more to buy somewhere else. The rain had eased on day 167, and I enjoyed harvesting a whole load of crops underneath the summer sun. And since the summer season was about to come to an end, I decided to plant a whole bunch of wheat with speed grow to make the start of the fall season just a little bit easier. I got done planting all of my wheat by the afternoon, so I paid a visit to Clint's before he closed for the day, and that's so I could pick up my new and improved iridium pan. That evening I found myself once again atop the ridgeside mountain with Dusty, taking in the views of the valley. I had forgotten to visit the mysterious figure last night, so I'm trying to make up for that. And at the exact time the clock struck 11 o'clock, oh good god this better be worth soiling my pants for. Turns out the mysterious figure had a name. Andrea. She explained to me that she's a shape-shifting elf, and that she gets bored quite easily. So she challenged me to a game of ultimate hide and seek. She'd go and shape-shift into something and I'd have to find her, and for every time I find her she'd give me a present. Let it be known, this is something I will definitely not forget about and accidentally stumble on later on. Day 168 was the final day of summer. I'd saved all of my ancient fruit for today's market day and I was so excited to sell it- Hold on. Where is everyone? Oh, you're kidding me. Maybe the festival tonight has put our market day on hold. And with my plans for the day out the window, I decided to spend the day just on the farm. Tidying up some spots that had overgrown, adding some grass as decoration, and even a few extra paths around the tree farm and greenhouse areas. I even touched up the seasonal crop chests a bit, planted some trees and added some more grass. And before leaving for the festival, I used some leftover grass starter for the animal area. But before I knew it, I was standing on the pier watching the moonlight jellies come into view. And we got to indulge in the sounds of musical perfection. Boo! Did I get you? <laughs> Day 169 is the beginning of spooky season, and if you know me well enough, my favourite season. Being the first day of the season, my first priority was to get my fields ready for this season's crops. Although some of it still has wheat growing, that didn't stop me from prepping the area for crop goodness. For now, I was off to Piers to buy a pile of seeds. I got the usual fall seeds along with some barley, bell pepper and blackberry seeds. And on the farm, I worked into the afternoon planting them all. Afterwards, I took a quick cable car ride up to Ridgetide, where I bumped into Pika, taking his son Kia here to Harvey's. It turns out he accidentally burnt himself while cooking. And as someone who gets splattered with hot oil more times than I'd like to admit, I knew exactly what he was going through. I carried on into town because it was Lorenzo's birthday today. I found him manning the till at Heap's convenience store and gave him a plate of spaghetti. Back in the valley that evening I did a bit of tidying up around the farm, especially in the orchard to make sure all of my trees were still able to grow. I picked up Robin's resource rush from the special quest board and got some sleep. 
Day 170 was seed planting part 2. I found Penny outside the museum to hand her a melon for her birthday before grabbing an assortment of more seeds from Piers. Anne planted down some broccoli seeds, kiwi seeds, sage seeds, carrot seeds, celery seeds and some fennel seeds. Oh and finally some rosemary. The rest of day 170 was mostly taken up in the mines, collecting stone for Robin's quest. Look, a thousand pieces of stone doesn't seem like a lot of stone until you have to go and collect a thousand pieces of stone by hand. It's quite time consuming. I started day 171 with a trip back up to Ridgeside Village so I could hand over Richard a birthday present. However, when I got to the Log Cabin Hotel that morning, I came across Floor, who seemed to be just waking up from a nap in the lobby area. She quickly became very aware that she was just wearing a towel and she seemed to be very embarrassed. I did try to make her feel better, but anyone who has fallen asleep in a towel in a hotel lobby knows that's pretty hard to come back from. In less mortifying news, I got to give Richard his birthday present. As I left, I felt the need to remove myself as far away from that situation as I possibly could. So I took a boat over to Ginger Island, where it was time for another episode of... Panning with... Poxio! I was very excited to put my new and improved Iridium Pan to the test. And let me tell you, with the Iridium Pan, we get so much stuff each time we pan in a shiny spot. Just look at it all. However, as night fell, and despite my increased chance for a lucky ring, we were unable to pan one up this time. So quickly moving on to day 172, it was back to Ridgeside this morning and there were quite a few cutscenes so let me quickly briefly sum them up. I found Aria playing on the stairs, sounds cute but she was really testing her knowledge on courtroom terms, seems like she's being told to become a lawyer and that's a whole can of worms that I really don't want to open just yet. Louis wanted me to be his personal butler for the day since he couldn't find Sunny and I told him to bugger off. And I met Zane, Maeve's grandson who has returned for business purposes in the neighbouring town, who seemed like quite a nice guy. With the cutscenes out of the way I could do what I wanted to do, which was to give both Aria a birthday present and you a birthday present. While visiting Yuma, I met Shiro, Yuma's brother, and I got a slight feeling that Shiro's health is the reason we see Yuma doing so much around town. Afterwards, I decided to go exploring in the Ridge Forest, which is where a bunch of items lay for me to collect for the seer. Yeah, remember that from the last 100 days? I'm finally getting around to it. In between slaying monsters, I made sure to start collecting mountain mist blooms for the seer's quest, and kept an eye out for relics to collect. I managed to get my hands on a yellow wood sculpture by this campsite and some silver fish bones. And after a while of exploring, I headed into Geo's hut to donate my first two relics. Two down, only seven more to find. Back in the valley that afternoon, I got to picking my ancient fruit in the greenhouse. Did I forget about it last week? Yes. Yes, I did. Do I want to talk about it? No, not particularly. Some crops were already ready for harvest on day 173, and I was able to pick some barley, sage, fennel, and bok choy. On my way into town, I passed by a conversation between Lenny, Richard, and Naomi. Naomi was the mother of Yuma and Shiro, married to Shoto. However, she agreed with Shoto to come back home after working abroad to help pay for their son's needs, and that Shoto would stay overseas working. A hard decision to make, I'm sure. However, I think Yuma and Shiro will appreciate having their mother home again. I carried on to Pierre's to buy a few more seeds, some soybeans, sweet potato seeds, some thyme, and finally some watermelon seeds, which I of course planted all back down on the farm. I then went off foraging for a bit since I couldn't think of much else to do. In between, I did catch up with Susan to tell her about how I automate my farm with sprinklers and caught Yuma wanting to play with the other kids, but refusing to because he had other jobs to do. He's a tough kid that Yuma. I went to check on my star fruit that afternoon and found they were ready for harvest, so I went around picking them all. I took a bus ride out to the oasis shop to purchase a bunch more star fruit seeds and filled up the shed to the brim again. I'm just being sure I have enough. Speaking of grandpa's shed, it was so close to being filled with kegs, so I crafted up a few more and tried to fill it up with what I had. It wasn't quiet enough, but we'll get there, I promise. Just before bed that night, I laid down some stone pathways around the bottom of the crop area before getting some much needed rest. Naomi visited the farm the next morning on day 174. She was letting me know that Richard had partnered with a cafe and the hotel had been expanded and that I should go and have a look when I get the time. That sounds very exciting. For now though, it was time to hit up the Skull Cavern for the day. I still had Robin's resource rush to complete and I thought, why not make it more fun by collecting Iridium at the same time? So that's exactly what I did. 
I even got my second auto petter. From never having one to two in the same series. Look at us go. It's day 175. Yes, it is a Sunday, but I'm opting out of today's market day. To be honest, I think I just forgot. Anyway, I had a few admin things to do this morning, which included dropping off a couple of artifacts to Gunther at the museum, handing over a snake skull and a bare foot to Professor Snail, and showing the Gormon Frog my wondrous crops I'd grown for him. When you've played the game for as long as I have, you get good at remembering these things. As I was heading back to Willy's boat, I also unlocked the beach resort before leaving. That afternoon back on the farm I crafted enough kegs to fill up the whole shed. Just ignore these two gaps here, I can already hear the comments popping off but I will, I will get there I promise. Afterwards I decided to put some of my hard earned cash towards an Iridium pickaxe upgrade from Clint's and a couple of Junimo huts for my crop fields. If you've never seen a Junimo hut before, basically it's free labour. They pick your crops for you, please note I do not condone free labour. As for the rest of the night, Dusty and I just kind of fluffed around the farm for a while. I worked through the rain on day 176, harvesting my crops and tending to the fields, making sure they were ready for more seeds. And speaking of more seeds, here we are at Pierre's getting some. And well, here we are back on the farm, planting them. But you may say that planting crops isn't very dangerous, and I'd agree with you. So in search of more precarious activities, I rode Dusty around the ridge forest again in search of more mist blooms and relics. I did manage to find a shell bracelet and by this waterfall an inked fossil. But with the whole monster population after me I decided to dip out where I donated my findings to the chest and geo's hut, did a quick bit of foraging around the hike trail and headed home. Day 177 started with a refreshing morning ride through town to Clint's, where I picked up my shiny new Iridium pickaxe and gave over my axe for the same treatment. On the way back home I popped into Piers to pick up some more seeds, since my Junimos were hard at work back home. Don't get me wrong, I love free lap- I mean Junimos, but if this little guy doesn't move, I'm gonna punt him back to his home world. But it's okay, he eventually moved. In all honesty, the rest of my day was spent exploring the volcano dungeon on Ginger Island. I managed to get my hands on a few dragon teeth and golden walnuts, so hey, that's always good. Moving right on to day 178, after wrapping up a few morning chores like petting my animals, putting some arugula in a preserves jar since my sturgeon wanted pickles of all things, and planting some fairy rose flowers, I did a bit of foraging around the secret woods and the west forest. It took me a while to find something to do today, but in the afternoon I remembered that the beach on Ginger Island had now opened up, meaning I could get a few more golden walnuts outside the pirate's cove. I then proceeded to get myself a snack IRL while I waited for the pirates to show up that night. By 8 o'clock they were getting rowdy in the cove so I challenged a pirate to 3 games of darts, which I dominated and got a total of 3 walnuts for beating him 3 times. But it was getting late and once I was back in the valley I collected a batch of ancient fruit wine which I decided to keep for this week's upcoming market day. If I could sum up day 179 with only 3 words per activity it may look a little something like this. <coughs> Picked ancient fruit, fruit into kegs, shed now full, axe back, yay, iridium hoe next, gave Jody gift, bought more seeds, planted more seeds, Maeve being mean. Shanice teaching kids. Also quick side note, Louie was giving Shanice grief that she wasn't a good teacher but it turns out she taught Zane and it was actually revered by Maeve so take that Louie. Anyway sorry back to the three word thing. Slayed big monster. Geo hut closed. Bedtime now methinks. Thanks to my Junimos I was able to collect a bunch of crops from their huts on day 180 and I collected some more oak resin and pine tar from the tree farm. I found myself back at Ridgeside this morning. Sonny told me about the time he got lost in the Ridge Forest as a kid until a golden fox came along to protect him, which is why he will forever bring gifts to the Shrine of the Mountain Spirit. It's the reason he worked so hard to become the Amethine's head butler. After hearing Sonny's tale I dropped off the relics I had found exploring yesterday to Geo's hut and picked up Maeve's charity wishlist special quest, which tasks me to donate 50 of each wool, eggs and milk. Good thing I bought two of each animal. That afternoon I was off to Ginger Island again, this time armed with a bunch of gems. I'd gotten two gems for the gem puzzle, I just needed the last two to finish it off, which I figured out eventually. For the rest of the day I fished out into the ocean, mainly hoping to fish up some golden walnuts. But as an added bonus I got to catch some cool new fish like a clownfish, a baby lunaloo, and a regular lunaloo. 
I woke up back in the valley on day 181 and spent the morning collecting my iridium hoe, giving my watering can over for an iridium upgrade, and giving Abigail an amethyst for a birthday. All before escorting Freddy to Piers to help him with his morning grocery shop. While in Ridgeside I dropped off everything for Maeve's charity wish list. turns out my auto collectors had been hard at work. Outside I got to spend some time with Yuma and Tort. Apparently he was here when Lenny first moved into town. Tort, by the way, not Yuma. But I did have a good time with everyone's favourite tortoise. I'll be honest, the rest of the day mostly consisted of Dusty and I mooching around the farm. So I guess we can continue on to day 182. After finding out I can phase through doors to give Ian a birthday present, I set up shop for today's market day and basically let the wine sell itself. We started the day at 541,687 gold. I just stood there and restocked the stall when the wine was about to run out and after selling every bottle at 120% the price of a normal bottle, we finished the day at a staggering 817,640 gold. And I still had 54 four bottles left over, which I dumped into the shipping bin before bed. I think I'm going to give Maeve a run for her money. Literally. Day 183 I was quick out to the mailbox to see our market report. We were now 56% of the way to the best market in the world, and could proudly say we were the best market on the continent. After fixing up my neglected crop fields and planting some more seeds on them, I took a bus trip out to Calico Desert to hand Sandy a gift for her birthday. And uh, we shared a very intimate moment. Hi, how are you? What just happened? Back in the valley I picked up my watering can from Clint's and could happily tick upgrade all tools to Iridium off my handy dandy to-do list. I passed by the special quest board afterwards and accepted Sophia's fairy garden quest, which tasks me to get some things for her to make a fairy garden. So I thought, why not make a start now? I bought 50 fairy seeds from Piers to get me started, and I vaguely remembered that the Junimo village sold some fairy stone. So through my nexus I travelled, and my suspicions were correct. I bought 3 out of the 5 that I needed. That night I thought a good use of my time would be to catch a void salmon for the missing bundle. And with that all I needed was to make some caviar and I'd be able to finish the missing bundle. I returned to the Junimo village the morning of day 184 to buy the remaining two fairy stone I needed for Sophia's quest. All there was left to make was fairy dust once my flowers had finished growing. But I don't have time for that nonsense. Today is the Valley Fair and I want to win the Grange display this year. Which I did by the way, because I didn't win last year and I'm still kind of salty about losing the egg hunt and ice fishing competition. My caviar was ready on day 185, so you know what that means? That's right, I'm now officially a rich person. Oh yeah, and I also completed the missing bundle. Yay! The last Junimo vanished in an explosion of stars and I was happy to tick off another thing of my handy dandy to-do list. Up at Ridgeside I fast tracked Sophia's quest by collecting a bunch of fairy rose flowers thanks to the wild flowers mod, which I had honestly completely forgotten about. But that meant I could craft 10 fairy dust back on the farm, and I dropped everything off to Sophia's chest and that was another special quest done and dusted. That afternoon I returned to the Ridge Forest in hopes of obtaining some of the final relics, and ended up coming across a night black diamond. Also I stumbled across this hidden waterfall under the mountain. And after much examination, it seemed that I wasn't supposed to find this just yet. So I made my way back home that night where I got to collect some ancient fruit wine just before bed. The morning of day 186 started off picking a lot of star fruit out of grandpa's shed. Then picking a lot of ancient fruit out of my greenhouse, turning those ancient fruit into seeds, and then planting a lot of ancient seeds in replacement of my star fruit. That afternoon I took off into the valley where I found Sophia coming out of Harvey's clinic. She seemed a bit down so we went and got some food from the saloon to cheer her up which seemed to help. I then interrupted Marnie's visit to the clinic because it was her birthday and I just had to give her a present. And now that I had possession of more star fruit than I'll ever need in my life, I rode Dusty out to Aurora Vineyard where I dropped off 200 star fruit to the young Junimo. Waited a little bit then concluded I'll probably have another creepy vision about it. That evening, Lewis visited the farm offering me the opportunity to expand the farm. For a casual, 250,000 gold. Ooh. Lucky for me, all of those market days had left me pretty well off, so I said I'd be happy to expand. After the morning chores were done on day 187, Dusty and I took off to the mayor's house to continue the farm expansion process. I purchased the property deed for a quarter of a million gold and gave it over to Lewis. All there was to do now is wait I guess. 
So to pass the time I wandered back up to the ridge to donate the night black diamond relic I'd found and continue hunting for the two final relics. I wasn't having much luck but I ended up finding a book beside the donation chest in Geo's hut and after snooping through the pages on cursed artifacts I figured out that the last two relics require certain circumstances. One from finding a lost spirit on a day with a multiple of three and the other when the rain is pouring to visit a tree house since I'd gotten the other two. Turns out Miss Bloom flowers only grow after it's been raining too. So I headed back home where I ended up just admiring my orchard for most of the night. But my hunches about Aurora Vineyard were confirmed overnight as I had another vision of someone just having an absolute rave over there, I don't know. Day 188 started with a visit from Lewis who was letting me know the land would be cleared tomorrow. I didn't have time to go and join the raging party happening at Aurora Vineyard since it was time for the Ridgeside Gathering. Last year we were able to get a prismatic shard from the boys stall, but this year it was the girls time to shine as they were selling a banana tree sapling, a mango tree sapling and a golden pumpkin. Sorry lads it just wasn't your year. It'd be rude not to conclude the ridge side gathering with a musical performance and once again I didn't have my music on, so enjoy whatever song I decide to put over it and Emily twerking. I woke up to more land on day 189, not too sure how they didn't wake me up last night moving at all, but hey, a win's a win I guess and I seemed pretty happy. As I was making my way past the bus stop this morning I ran into Kimpoi and Malaya. They seemed a bit lost, but it turns out they used to live in Ridgeside a while ago and were just making their way back home having just travelled around the world. I graciously showed them to the cable car but ended up getting in the middle of an Olga and Bert squabble. I also did some research and it should be known that Olga and Malaya are sisters, or sisters sister-in-laws? I don't know. And Kimpoi and Malaya are Alyssa's parents. I just thought that'd be some handy information. Anyway, Kimpoi then paid me a quick visit to say he's now running Nightingale Orchard, selling tree saplings they'd found on their adventures across the world. So I'll keep that in mind and go and visit soon. For now though I had some presents to hand out and I accidentally stumbled across Andrea floating around the outside of the community center as a futon bear. See I told you I wouldn't forget about it but accidentally stumbled across it. I handed off some goat's cheese to Robin and headed to the market day where I spent the day selling up my very expensive ancient fruit wine. Only taking a break to hand Carmen a red mullet for her birthday. Business was booming again and the markets were alive and busy today and by 6 o'clock that night we had done our very best. So I shipped off the rest of the wine back to the farm, worked on a new path now that the farm had been expanded and headed to bed. I remembered about Aurora Vineyard again on day 190 so Dusty and I paid a visit to the abandoned house. Any trace of a banging rave had obviously been cleaned up, instead I met this cute little guy who goes by the name of Apples. With the star fruit I'd given him he'd turned the abandoned house into his own little sanctuary. Very cute. After meeting Apples I spent the day working on utilizing my expanded farmland. I did that by finally moving the slime hutch and spending way too long figuring out the layout. I mean, I mean like way too long. I tried putting down pathways but they looked a bit tacky and I wasn't sure what to do. So instead I just left it more open, more chances for creative inspiration that way. And quite honestly all that faffing about took up my whole day. Day 191 was a tough day for me. Somehow I managed to convince myself that 23 was a multiple of 3. Now the ones who pass beginner math will notice that this is not the case and I commend you for that. So I had to pause on visiting the ridge today. Also I visited Robin, I can't remember why but it didn't matter because she wasn't there because she was building a pond on my farm. It's safe to say today didn't start off very well. I kinda just stood in the rain soaking in the disappointment. They ask you how you are you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine but you just can't get into it because they- So to fill out the day I gave Maddie a birthday gift, gave Lance my golden pumpkin I bought the other day and planted a few more seeds on the farm before heading to bed at an understandable 5.30pm. But day 192 was a new day. Today was a multiple of three and it was raining. It was time to get those last two relics. Dusty and I rode into the ridge forest once again, started to collect some more mist bloom flowers and came across our first relic by talking to this ghostly looking woman who gave me a hollowed bear. The last relic wasn't found so easily. Dusty and I had collected quite the ensemble of monsters and as I found the lonely spirit floating through the forest I received the lover's sorrow relic. Then it was time to dip. Back in the safety of Geo's hut I delivered the final artifacts. It had taken a while but we had managed to find every relic. I noticed a quest had popped up which was to find an underground waterfall. I'd found one of them before. 
but that it'd have to wait for another day. For now, I was all adventured out, so I returned to the valley to give George a birthday present, collect the last few bottles of wine I had brewed, and sleep. Creative inspiration had struck on day 193. I had the idea to move my second pond over, and I spent the day decorating the slime hutch slash pond section. I'll work on the bee houses soon, but for now it looks pretty good. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's about all I did today. So straight to day 194. I caught Corrine this morning coming out of her house so I could give her a birthday gift before heading to Ginger Island to plant my banana and mango tree down on the farm. And for another episode of Panning with Poxio. It was the last episode for now since we were quickly running out of days, and I'm sorry to say that we walked away with zero lucky rings today. But don't you worry, the Mega Modded series is going to be a long one, and there will be plenty more chances for panning in the future. Day 195, I was back to restocking my kegs full of ancient fruit. Did I forget to pick them the other day? Why yes, yes I did. Afterwards I dropped Paula off a Ridge Azorian flower for her birthday and popped by Nightingale Orchard, where Kim Poi was selling a whole bunch of tree saplings. Good thing I left room in my orchard because I bought every single one and planted them all down back on the farm. Now we just have to hope that there's no more saplings left to plant. That evening I fixed up the beehive layout so that we could fit some flowers in there and finished up the decorating process by planting some trees and adding some grass. But it wouldn't be fall without some spooky stuff now would it? I attended the Spirit Seed Festival that night, struggled through this year's maze, it changes every year by the way, to get my golden pumpkin and retired home to bed. Day 196 was the final day of fall and I began my day giving Susan that golden pumpkin I'd gotten from the maze last night. To be honest there wasn't much to do today. I did potter around the farm most of the day just adding some little details here and there, collected a few crops and did a bit of foraging around Ridgeside. I bumped into Carmen who wanted to fish by Geo's hut and almost got taken out by Kiwi who was very ready to game into. Dusty and I just watched the sun go down in the orchard that evening. There aren't many days left to go but I guess it's time for... A blanket of white had fallen on the valley and I have to say it's bloody cold. Despite that I headed into the sewers to hand Krobus a horse radish for his birthday and completely forgot that he sells a star drop so I gobbled that up right away. I also purchased some iridium seeds from him. I assume these turn into iridium when grown. Turns out winter seeds aren't the only thing to grow in winter this time around as Pierre was selling some elderberry seeds, juniper berry seeds and mint seeds, all of which I planted back down on the farm. A new week means new special quests and I picked up Willy's tropical fish quest from the board. I then headed up to Ridgeside to see if there was any progress with the Seer's quests. And all I got was a very ominous message saying to come back to the ridge on a clear night after 8pm. She's coming to greet you. I'm actually a little scared. Days 198 to 199 were pretty much just catching those tropical fish. I managed to catch all of the blue discus and lionfish by the end of day 198, and day 199 Jerick decided that he wanted to have a competition about whose farm is better. I got myself the lucky charm from the truck driver so I could have all the luck for the next panning with pox seals and spent the day fishing up stingray, which took me all day to catch only 5 of them. And here we are on day 200. As is tradition in all of my 100 days videos, I like to relax in the spa and reflect on the last 100 days. And I must say, these last 100 days have been the busiest I've ever played. We became the best market on the continent, made new friends, completed the community center, and finally got to Ginger Island. And there's probably so much more to do. But I guess for that my friends, you'll just have to wait for the next 300 days. For now though, I think it's time to relax. So there you have it, another 100 days in mega modded Stardew Valley has just flown past. Here's a look at the farm just before the seasons changed into winter. I'm super happy with how this series is turning out, and if you did enjoy the video then leave a like and subscribe to the channel so I know you want more Stardew Valley content like this. And also don't forget to buy my merch. But as always, you're all wonderful people so have a wonderful day, and thanks for watching.